Hey everybody, part two, taxation. Why investing changes in retirement? And taxation is part two, and it does change things. It does. Our working years are so simple. It's a W-2 paycheck for most of us. Some people self-employed, it's a whole new ball game. But the reality is, is we get taxed on what we make, and it's always the same thing, and la, 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 whatever. Okay, retirement's different. It's way different. First of all, they're typically not pulling the taxes out of your paycheck anymore, and you actually have to pay them. Oh, that feels terrible. Nobody likes that, right? So let's look at this. The first thing you have to do is go through and learn the rules of the three different types of money, okay? IRA money, everything is going to be taxed as ordinary income. You have this pile of savings, and you're going to be forced to pay taxes on it. That you have to understand. Okay, you must start withdrawing or have a plan to withdraw the day you walk off that job, because the vast majority of us were making money up here in our working years and are making money down here in our retirement years, which means we're most likely paying less taxes in retirement than we were when we were working. Just remember, you don't realize that because you weren't paying attention when you were working. That's usually the reason. It just came out of your paycheck. It's kind of like the, why the 401ks work, because it just comes out of your paycheck. You didn't have to actually go save that money. It just came out automatically. So logically, the whole idea is saving in the IRA, the pre-tax when we're making money way up here and pulling out when we're way down here so we can pay less taxes on it. So we have to have that plan. That's that advisor's job. No taxation, understand taxation and have a plan to pull money out of that IRA. And the reason that, that stable investing is going to be better is going to be part three of this series, okay? Because when you start taking withdrawals out of a part of your portfolio, stable investing is always going to produce better results. You don't want a very turbulent portfolio. So we want to focus safe investments in that IRA because of that reason. And if you care about your heirs, they hate this IRA money and you need to get it out of there. And if you don't need it, then convert it to Roth by managing the tax brackets because that's all about taxes. Because once you get it into Roth, it's tax-free forever. It's tax-free for the rest of your life and 10 years of your heir's life. That's a huge benefit. If I'm your heir, that's the best type of money you could ever give me. That beats that beats all other kinds of money. I don't care if it's life insurance. I don't care if it's this or that. Or this. I want Roth money. Roth money is the greatest. I get to let it grow for 10 years and never pay taxes on it. So awesome. So we can also invest differently. There's no required minimum distributions like there is in IRA money. So in Roth, we can invest differently with no tax consequences, whether it's aggressive growth style investing or income investing, higher yielding investments like publicly traded REITs, MLPs, even some of those great closed end funds that, that create great consistent higher yields for us. These actually work really well in Roth, where they typically don't work in the other tax classes. So things we can do in Roth that we're not going to do elsewhere. And then there's after-tax money, this non-qualified money that we see right here. Every choice we make is going to come with different tax consequences. And this is why every advisor has to understand taxation, right? Avoid interest bearing investments because they get taxed at full tax rates, right? No CDs or bonds, corporate bonds. No, stay away from those. That's not for this part of the portfolio. We have other places like the IRA money. I would rather see you put that in, but everybody seems to put it in their non-qualified after-tax money. And we shouldn't be because that's inefficient from a taxation standpoint. And we would rather have the safe investments over there in the Roth. That is where they should be, okay? Avoid non-qualified dividends and short-term capital gains. That's as simple as stop buying actively managed mutual funds. You do not want high turnover rates, right? Because that means somebody inside that portfolio is buying and selling and sending you the tax bill, even though you just bought and hold. So I know you used mutual funds in your IRA and your 401k all your life, and you didn't realize it. When you own them in this part of your portfolio, they cause a bunch of taxation. 
that you can't control. And in the pandemic, a lot of those guys in those actively mutual funds, they just sold everything in the heck with it. And you got a big tax bill. So we got to be careful about those. Stop owning those types of investments here. We got to know that equities and real estate step up their basis upon your passing. Even if it's a married couple, a joint asset, one of you passes away, the cost basis steps up. You can sell it and pay no taxes. So long-term capital gains, they can disappear quite often. Okay. So what we should be focusing on is these long-term capital gains and qualified dividends because they are tax advantaged. They are taxed at much lower tax rates. So let's look at what those are. Here you go. If you're 65 and older, just it's just slightly bigger uh, standard deduction, you pay zero taxes. They're tax-free. Qualified dividends and long-term capital gains are zero taxes if your total income for a married couple is less than 116 or 58 for a single person. Okay. Then from 116 to 277 or 58 to 213, they're only 15%. And I say only because the next slide is going to show you your ordinary income tax, where your social security gets taxed, where your IRA money gets taxed, where that interest from that CD gets taxed is 22%. I'd rather pay 15 than 22. That's why qualified dividends and long-term capital gains belong in that non-qualified money, that after-tax money, that money that you have saved that's not IRA, that's not Roth. We need to be investing that properly so we can take advantage of these much lower tax rates while we have them. Because right now, they're on the books and that's the way they work. So we live within the rules that we have, okay? And then from there, the 15 only goes to 18. And we're talking when you're in 26, 28, 32, you're in much higher tax brackets if you're paying 18% on this taxation. So non-qualified dividends, long-term capital gains, much lower taxation. So let's look at all the rest of your income. All the rest of your income is right here. This includes the standard deduction. This is where all of your interests, your, your self-employed profit, your W-2 income, your rental profit, your social security, your IRA withdrawals, short-term capital gains, non-qualified dividends, all your other income other than long-term capital gains and qualified dividends is taxed here. So when you're paying zero for those non-qualified or for those qualified dividends and long-term capital gains, you're paying 12 over here. So from zero income, well, it's not really zero, but the top of the 12% tax bracket, because you have a zero, which is your standard deduction, and then you have a little bit at 10%, and then it's the rest of it's at 12. You got $120,000 worth of income at 12% taxation as a married couple. 60,000 for a single person, then it jumps all the way from 12 to 22. Big jump there. Okay. You go over 120, you start paying 22% until you go over 221, and then it jumps to 24. So just know in 2025, these tax rates are going up. That 12 is going to be 15, that 22 is going to be 25, that 24 is going to be 28, et cetera. So please understand taxation come 2026 will be higher. That's what we have on the books. We deal with the rules that we know are in place. We don't speculate on what we think is coming. Okay, it's always important to deal with the rules we have in place because a lot of these wonderful speculations and I don't want to call them conspiracy theories, but, you know, reasonable thinking that these things should happen don't ever happen. Okay, the wealthy rule of the world, they're not going to hurt their, their own dividends. Everybody says dividends are going to change. I'm not quite sure. I'm not convinced yet that they will. And until they do, planning is based on the rules we know as they are. And right now we're paying less taxation. 2026, it jumps back to the 1525. 15 here, 25 here. You have plenty of room to work on this. Taxation in retirement is different because your income sources are different, because you can control taxation better by utilizing Roth properly, by utilizing long-term capital gains and qualified dividends properly. 
by managing the right investments in the right parts of your portfolio, by utilizing your IRA properly, Roth properly, non-qualified money properly. This takes planning and understanding of taxation. And this has to change as you go into retirement. It's much more technical and your advisor has to have tax knowledge, tax understanding to come up with any form of an efficient plan whatsoever to fund you and your retirement. All right, hopefully that helps. You can see how passionate I am about this topic. I just created this new class, so we're testing it out this year. So if I can help in any way, uh, again, I love this stuff. This is what I do. Uh, give us a call, shoot us an email, and I'm always happy to help. Use the comment section below. Shoot me some questions or thoughts or concerns or whatever. Uh, subscribe, share it with others, and I will see you next week for part three, where we're going to talk about the fundamental difference when you go to start withdrawing from your portfolio. We'll talk about the order of returns and all those types of things, because that's going to be what really is one of the biggest problems people face as they transition from the deposit years to the withdrawal years. All right, we'll see you next week. Thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm.